Workforce Solutions Vocational Rehabilitation. So uh, we welcome you and uh, we will get started with uh, introductions. My name is Teresa Pena. I'm a special education specialist uh, here at Judson ISD. And uh, with me tonight is Lynn Franklin, special education coordinator, and Michelle Tanner, who is our newly um, appointed Texas Vocational Rehab Transition Counselor um, who has re who replaced our previous counselor who recently retired. So we welcome her in collaboration with this session tonight. So thank you for joining us. All righty. So tonight's agenda, what we're going to cover is, uh, is we're going to discuss uh, how the school system and Texas Workforce Solutions can work together when providing vocational rehabilitation services to individuals with disabilities in order to meet their post-secondary goals. So we're going to look first at how IDEA and transition connect to one another by looking at um, the education piece, the community piece, and uh, those post-secondary options. Then we're going to look at graduation, uh, look at the foundations and endorsement plans, and then we'll turn it over to Texas Workforce Commission where we will look at how those pre-employment transition services can be provided uh, through the vocational rehabilitation, uh, which is uh, under Texas Workforce Solutions, falling under the umbrella of Texas Workforce Commission. So I will turn it over to Lynn Franklin, who will discuss uh, IDEA. Thank you. All right, so a little bit of background information. IDEA, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, that is federal law for students with disability. So transition services are built into the definition of IDA for special education, specifically as it relates to training, education, employment, and where appropriate independent living skills. Federal law says before the student turns or by the age of 16, we have to have a transition plan in place. However, in the state of Texas, that starts at the age of 14. So next we're going to take a look at more about transition, what it looks like, and what it means. And we're going to do that by looking at a transition process that schools are required to create and develop in the IEP. And the IEP is created during the ARD meeting. So this is the transition process. And so I know it's a lot, but we're going to go step by step. So the first thing that we look at is the age-appropriate transition assessment. So the student is going to complete that. And with that, we get information on their interests, their preferences, their needs, and their strengths. We use that information in the IEP, specifically present levels of academic achievement and functional performance, or the PLAF, and we'll talk more about that. We also use this information to develop a measurable post-secondary goal, and this is what do they want to do after they graduate from high school. And that goal has to have certain components, including education training, employment, and independent living skills if appropriate. We also use that information to develop the IEP goal. And this is how we track progress on their measurable post-secondary goal. And this is what you get a progress report on every reporting period. We also develop a course of study, which just are the classes that are geared towards that measurable post-secondary goal. With that, we also look at what instruction do they need. Do they need instructional support or behavior support? related services, or maybe access to community experiences. All of that is what we call a coordinated set of activities. Next, we also look at agency linkages, kind of what we're doing tonight. And then we end with a summary of performance. And this is what's completed upon graduation or when the student ages out of special education. So next we're going to talk a little bit further um, about the special or special education process before we continue on with transition and graduation. In order to receive special education services, a student must have a disability. And that disability must cause the child to need special education services. So in our committee must answer the following two questions when determining whether a student qualifies for special education services. 
does the child meet the criteria for at least one of the 13 eligibilities? And you can see the 13 listed over here. And as a result of the disability, does the child have a need for special education services? So we have to look at if there is an eligible condition, if there's a need for special education services. If we can answer yes to both of those, then the student is eligible to receive special education services. Once eligibility has been determined, the Art Committee will develop an IEP. And the team will begin by examining the present levels of academic achievement and functional performance, the PLAF. I just mentioned that a few minutes ago. The PLAF contains three critical areas. The first one is the impact of the student's disability. And we're going to talk more about that in the next slide. It also documents the student's strengths, as well as current levels of performance. And we use that for our baseline data as well. It also identifies and describes the needs of the student, whether it's academic or functional, or in some cases it might be both. Of course, academics, we're talking about reading, writing, math. Functional could be behavior needs, could be social needs, or it could be self-help needs as well. The impact of disability. This is a statement that bridges this, the student's evaluation and the IEP. This is where we outline the student's identified disability and how it affects their access and progress in the general education curriculum. And so we have to look at these three questions and answer these three questions. How will the student's disability affect their involvement in general education? How will the student's disability affect their access to general education curriculum? And how will the student's disability affect their progress in the general education curriculum? So an example of an impact statement may sound something like this. Due to Joey's specific learning disability in the area of written expression, he has difficulty writing a cohesive paragraph. He benefits from the use of graphic organizers to help him make connections between ideas. So it may sound similar to that. So we use all of this information to develop our transition services. So next we're going to talk about how graduation ties in to that graduation piece or the transition piece. Graduation. So we can't have a successful transition into post-secondary success without a graduating from high school. So it's important to understand that process and how that works. So currently, Texas has only one graduation plan. So every student, that's called the foundation plan. And this plan requires 22 credits to graduate. So we... Um, can look at the sections we need four credits in English, three in math, three in science, three social studies, two in a language other than English, and we need one fine art, one physical education, and five electives. So that's the minimum that a student needs in order to graduate on the foundation plan. But a student can also enhance their graduation by earning an endorsement, a distinguished level of achievement, and a performance acknowledgement. So we'll discuss some options um, over the next few slides. But let's think about the graduation plan just in terms of this uh, illustration of this Sunday. So our foundation high school plan is the base of our Sunday. It's going to be our cone and our ice cream. It is the, the, the bottom of what we need in order to graduate from high school. So it is indeed the foundation of our graduation. Uh, then we can add some hot fudge on top. That's going to be our endorsement. What are we uh, pursuing? What's the pathway that we're uh, pursuing through high school? And then on top of that, we can add the sprinkles and the whipped cream, which could be our distinguished level of achievement, depending on the extra courses that we've taken in order to reach that goal. And then the cherry on top is our performance acknowledgement. So it just builds on top of that foundation graduation plan of those 22 credits. There is one diploma in Texas, but there are two types of graduation, and both require demonstrated mastery of the required state standards or the district standards um, if they are greater than what the state requires. It requires completed, uh, completed credit requirements for graduation under the Foundation High School program, 
and satisfactory performance as established in the legal uh, framework. Unless the student's art committee has determined that, uh, excuse me, that uh, satisfactory performance on the required state assessment isn't necessary for graduation. So if you've had an ARD meeting where the student has uh, met by participation of their state assessment, that's the piece that it's referring to. The personal graduation plan uh, is what, where we are right now in this point in our school year. So if you have a rising eighth grader going into ninth grade, you're looking at these uh, personal graduation plans now. You're looking at those four-year plans that the students are entering high school with. If you've already passed that stage in your student's high school career, then you're working through that PGP now. You're, you're utilizing that document. Maybe it has made some changes throughout the four years, but that document is there to help establish the four-year credits and help our students uh, seek a program of study in their area of interest and help them get to their post-secondary goal. So we're going to look at prerequisites and the needed requirements to earn an endorsement. A lot of our career pathways, they require st uh, courses to be taken in a certain order, and all of that comes into play uh, when we are looking at the program, uh, the personal graduation plan. But having one, it promotes college and workforce readiness. Uh, it does um, help with career placement and possibly career advancement and uh, it facilitates the student's transition from secondary education into that post-secondary life. So it's helping them accomplish the goal or get as close to that post-secondary goal as possible. And these are just a couple of resources that are available. Uh, they're downloadable online. There is a graduation toolkit. And within the toolkit, there's just general information regarding the uh, program, uh, foundation plan and the credits required, any other information related to graduation that you never thought you might need could uh, is found in this graduation toolkit. And then you'll see these uh, colored bars at the underneath the toolkit. Those are individual flyers that you can uh, download a color copy uh, yourself, a digital copy, and uh, you can see what is involved with the science and technology, engineering, and math uh, program of study. You can look at the multi multidisciplinary and see what courses are uh, fall under those categories. Now, that doesn't mean Judson ISD offers every course that's listed under there. Those are just courses that could be available. You would have to consult your different high schools uh, to see which high schools offer what and uh, if if a school chooses to only have one of these uh, programs of study, it is going to be a multidisciplinary. However, Judson ISD offers them all. And then uh, here's some examples of those uh, programs of study. So with multidisciplinary, it's going to allow a student to sample some of the other uh, ones, and they can come out with the multidisciplinary. Um, so it gives them a variety of credits and uh, advanced courses that they have the option to complete. And it could also provide the distinguished level of achievement if the appropriate courses are taken for that distinction. Um, arts and Humanities, that's going to be our fine arts. Uh, advanced Social Studies, Advanced English and World Languages. Business and Industry, falls, uh, Communication falls under that. Our Technology courses, Ag, Welding. Uh, Wagner High School has welding, Judson High School has transportation services, um, ag it falls at Judson High School. So we have a lot of courses, business marketing and finance is offered at all three. Um, we have public services, cosmetology falls in this category offered at Veterans Memorial High School, education and training which is at Wagner, um, and we have law and public services offered at all three high schools and then our JROTCs, and we have those located at all three high schools, depending on which branch of service you are, uh, would like to pursue. And then our STEM falls in uh, under uh, biomedicals, computer science, cybersecurity, and engineering, and Wagner, and, uh, Wagner has engineering biomedical, and then the computer sciences are offered at all three high schools, with cybersecurity being at Veterans Memorial. 
And then to access these particular documents, you can go to the Texas Workforce Commission website and uh, you can look in their products label or their products tab and click on that and you're going to be able to find these downloadable brochures. So if you are interested in looking at any of these documentation yourself, you, you can uh, scan the QR code and it's going to take you to that particular site uh, at, through Texas Workforce Commission and to be able to access these documents that we've talked about. So with that being said, it's time to turn it over to Texas uh, Workforce uh, Commission with our Texas Workforce Solutions Vocational Rehabilitation Transition Counselor. And she's going to talk to you a little bit uh, more about the uh, process to get things started working with Texas Workforce and then how we can work together as a school and an agency. Thank you, Ms. Tanner. Thank you. All right, good evening. Uh, as she stated, my name is Michelle Tanner with that long title going from just school counselor to transition vocational rehabilitation counselor. We just like to go by VR counselor. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about Texas Workforce Commission, first, first let's look at our history and why uh, we do what we do um, and how we do what we do. Uh, an act was established through the federal government called the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, or WIOA, um, which basically is funding for uh, us to be able to reach out to students um, to help with transitioning. Oh, thank you. I was wondering if you'd even see the top of my head on the, <laughs> on the screen since I'm so tall. Um, to allow for increased work-based opportunities, um, to help students actually get that experience or get that introduction into working starting from high school so that by the time they finish high school um, they would have a better idea of what kind of employment they would like. Now when we talk about transitioning within our program there's a focus on students who qualify. This is not an entitlement program this is actually a program you have to um, be eligible for. So the students who are eligible are defined as uh, being between 14 and 22 years of age and they are eligible for or receiving special education um, or related services under the Disabilities Education Act um, idea, or they are receiving services through the 504 um, uh, Rehabilitation Act, or what we call a 504 program. And they're also in an educational setting, whether it be public school, private school, um, home school, or a post-secondary education program, or the juvenile justice system. Now there are options for services. We have what we call kind of like a, a quick route, um, which would be our pre-ETS or what we call potentially eligible um, transition services uh, to get the pre-employment transition services, or you can apply for the full array of services. Uh, it tends to get confusing when we have the terms potentially eligible and then fully eligible. But essentially, if you look at it as the potentially eligible means you kind of get your, um, you get your toe wet, right? It's kind of like your appetizers uh, to taste a few of the samples. If you ever go to Chili's, you can get the uh, sampler that has the cheese sticks and the nachos. You get a little taste of all of what we can offer versus fully applying, which is a longer process, requires, you know, uh, more paperwork, more time, uh, definitely more in-depth um, uh, work involved. Uh, but that gives a full array of services. So when we're looking at 14 to 22 year olds, maybe the uh, initial students may start off with the potentially eligible status and as we get closer to graduation, we look at um, the full application. Now what are those pre-employment transition services? You may hear in the future or even in the rest of this presentation uh, the term pre-ETS, uh, but it essentially means the pre-employment transition services. And we look at five different areas. Job exploration counseling, work-based learning, counseling on post-secondary opportunities, work ready, workplace readiness training, and self-advocacy. Let's dig deeper into each of those sections. So when we talk about career exploration, I mean, it's essentially that, right? Trying to help students figure out what does that career mean? And we always, um, I always like to say, you know, everyone um, tends to think when they're young, oh, I want to be a dentist, but what does that really look like besides just brushing your teeth? Well, can you handle 
crouching over someone for a long period of time? How much schooling does it take? What skills are completely necessary to be successful in that field? So we will help students become aware of what their true interests are and the opportunities in the area, how feasible is it to get that particular career, what all is entailed in that career field. So we'd like to do uh, a full exploration of what would be the best career for that, that individual. Right? Next would be work-based learning. Okay, and that is actual experiences in the real world work environment to help the students uh, gain that real world knowledge of what happens in that job and do they have the skills for it. You know, this is a, a great benefit to students, again, because they can actually see individuals performing those tasks. They get an understanding of what the employer is looking for, uh, what the expectations are. They also get to um, keep a, you know, networking, right? They get to network with, uh, future contacts for job opportunities, uh, and it helps them uh, have a true understanding of that job and what it would take to get that job offer in the future. You know, that can be a different, um, uh, a different, I would say, different experiences of what that can look like. So looking at some paid internships, some non-paid internships, um, volunteering, field trips, shadowing, Counseling on uh, post-secondary opportunities is looking at beyond high school education. So we will work with students in figuring out, you know, what does it take to move on either to you know, either college, university, or trade school? Um, what does it take to get into that particular program? How do you complete the admission paperwork? Is there any testing involved? Where to go to get the accommodations um, that you need to be successful in school? So. Where's that disability services office? And um, how do you get additional help on campus? When we're looking at post-secondary uh, education, we're also looking at the different career clusters, um, all the different career fields, all the different options in order to get to that particular career field. You know, not necessarily, um, you don't necessarily need a four-year degree for certain um, jobs. And so we may look at, you know, two-year colleges, four-year colleges, trade school, maybe military is a, option for some students. So we will look at the full array of post-secondary options with the student. And there's workplace readiness training. And that's what we're talking about, the soft skills that are required um, to be successful in student in, in, um, in post-secondary um, work. So, you know, what does that take? What does that mean for the student? How to be on time? What is the dress uh, code? How do you dress for the uh, interview? Resume building, uh, appropriate uh, workplace behavior and uh, relationships, so that way they know the um, skills not only to get the job but to keep the job. And then self advocacy, which is very important for a lot of our students, um, learning how to speak up for themselves, how to have that communication to uh, address the specific needs they may have, uh, be able to talk to their boss about their time sheets, uh, if they're having any issues with any um, particular task, how to ask for help. We want to uh, work with the students to help them in that area as well. Now, you would like to have your child be involved in any of these pre-ETs, uh, the pre-employment transition services. Well, you would just need to complete a request form uh, if your child is a minor, then of course the parent would uh, help fill out the form. If the child is 18 or up, then we would have the child fill out the form and ask uh, the child for permission for the parent to be involved. Uh, but it requires just some basic information uh, to receive those samples of the transition services. Uh, we would ask for disability verification. Um, that may be a copy of the IEP, the 504 plan, uh, social security benefits documentation, a letter from medical professional uh, or for school or school professional documenting the disability. Applying for the full services, that's what we're going to um, look at. You know, we have that initial contact. We're going to do a thorough um, diagnostic interview asking, you know, digging deep into, you know, how does a disability affect the student, um, history of employment, education, legal issues, um, students' per perception of problems, um, counselor observation, medical resources, their social security um, status, and then we'll see um, if they're eligible. Okay, remember that eligible eligibility criteria comes from if there's a physical or mental impairment, 
if it constitutes a results in a substantial impediment to employment, if the student requires VR services to prepare for, secure, retain, or advance or gain employment that is consistent with the individual's unique strengths, resources, priorities, concerns, abilities, capability, basically meeting them where they're at. And then is the student capable of achieving an employment outcome? If ineligible, then the case is closed. We would not move further um, with services and student cannot receive uh, any services, including pre-ets. But if eligible, we will move forward to uh, come up with what we call the individual plan of employment. And so that is a plan of services where we're going to look at assessing um, the student in different areas. Maybe the student has um, maybe some sensory issues, and we want to see what is the optimal situation uh, for work for that student. Maybe they can work at HEB uh, closer in the evening when it's not as crowded versus being there Sunday afternoon at 11 o'clock when it's super crowded. May, that may be, um, there may be too much stimulus for the student. So we'll put them in different uh, areas, um, different situations to see how, um, how they respond to that to help find the optimal job situation for that student. So we look at different assessments like that um, to help the student. This can, okay, I was about to say, I've done that. I was a school counselor, I can go into this too. <laughs> So next we're going to talk about college career and military readiness, or CCMR. So this is part of the student achievement domain, and it measures um, our graduates' preparedness for college, the workforce, and the military. So the state of Texas wants every student who graduates to be ready for something, ready for college, ready for a career, or ready for the military. So that is why, oh, thank you. Um, that is why this, this talk tonight is, is very important. So the VR services that Ms. Tanner just went over with you can help us with all of those things. These are the indicators. So there's one for college, career, and military. And as I mentioned, it's part of an accountability system. So we're going to briefly look at each one of those areas. So the first one is college readiness. So the pre-ETS program, again, that was shared with you, can assist our students um, in developing those skills necessary for college. I know we talked about employment, but really those are skills that can be useful as they're entering college as well. And here are some other examples as well. Um, having the students check in with their guidance counselor, visiting potential higher education campuses, looking at various degree programs, and having conversations with the case manager that they have or monitor teacher that they have at the campus. Making sure they know when the SAT and AC test dates are scheduled. And then knowing the Office of Disability Supports at the different colleges. Now each college calls it something different, so it's important to know once you know the college you want to go to or a variety of colleges that you may be interested in, they all call it something different. So that's really something that you're going to have to research to make sure that you get connected with the Office of Disability Supports. This is the office that can help with accommodations and, and help you through any challenges that you may have. The next one is career readiness. And this is where you learn about various occupations and your fit between your career preferences and what you want to do when you graduate. So looking at your skills and your interests and your values, and then we match that with your strengths. And that helps you to kind of pinpoint a career, because there's a lot of career opportunities, a lot of options out there for you. So next, we're going to talk more about finding that fit between your preferences and careers. Um, and then we'll come back in and talk about military readiness. OK. So there are a number of self-assessments that are available online that really provide good information when we're trying to help our students and our children narrow down what they kind of want to do in life. If you think back to when you were 14 or 15 and, and you know what you thought you wanted to do back then and then you look at what you do now, do they match? Did you really know what you wanted to do back then? 
Um, there are lots of tools uh, just to help our students kind of narrow their focus a little bit so that they have a direction and we know what to help uh, prepare them for. Of course, we all know that options change throughout life. But I'm just going to take you on like a little short field trip on a couple of these. We're not going to look at all of these, but you can certainly make note. And if you Google any of these, you will be able to uh, access them for free online. So we're going to just take a quick little field trip to ONET um, so that you can see what ONET looks like. It has a, a really great uh, resource where you can search by career cluster, you can search by job duties, uh, any soft skills that may be needed, what if there's technology related skills, but let's start and just look in the find occupations. So we'll start with those career clusters that Ms. Tanner mentioned. And it has all of those career clusters that she uh, had mentioned and showed on the slide earlier. So we'll just pick, uh, let's do, how about law, public safety, corrections, and security, which we know all three of Judson ISD high schools offer uh, programs of study in those areas. So now it takes us to this whole long list of career pathways. We can look at jobs in the correctional system. Uh, we can look at emergency and fire management, and then we have law enforcement services, legal services, security, and protective services. So let's just start with uh, correction services. So if we want to be a correctional officer or a jailer, we'll just click on here. And now it's going to take us to some uh, tasks that that particular position is required to perform, some technology skills that are needed in order to be successful in that particular uh, place, uh, employment aspect. We've got work activities. So this is going to tell us, are we going to have to do a lot of writing, a lot of reading? Are we going to have to be on our feed? How, what kind of communication are we going to need uh, to be able to have? Who are we communicating with? We've got a little more detailed work activities, work context. Then we can look at the work zone. So what type of education is needed? Any, if, it, if they typically require related experience, how the job training may look. And then we can scroll down and look at training and credentials, and we can select that by state in our zip code. And if there's any nationwide certifications, it lists skills that are needed, the knowledge level, the education, abilities, interests, values, work styles. It's got everything that you would need. This is a very important piece right here is the wages and employment trends. So it's going to look across the state and it will then it'll look at our local wages it'll compare what uh, bear county has or what our uh, zip code offers and it'll give you a projected growth so it's going to it, it tells you the projected number of job openings that could happen over the next couple of years uh, next 10 years um, and what this the labor trends are so this gives you some really good information Maybe this is information that uh, that adults in your family could use. Maybe you've got students already in college who really are still struggling with their their direction of where they want to go. This is just a great resource to look at. And then I want to look at this one right here, the Texas Reality Check. This one's kind of a fun one. Um, this one will you can use this lifestyle calculator. And if you start your reality check and you narrow down where you live, and then we're going to start with this particular area. Do I want to live at home? Do I want to, which is going to cost me nothing unless until mom and dad start making me pay rent. Uh, or am I going to live in an apartment? Do I want a house? And it's going to um, start calculating what my housing expenses are going to be and what kind of total monthly expenses that I'm going to end up having when it's all said and done. So I click, and then I'm going to go over here to my bills that I'm going to have to have. Well, this is uh, 2023. Everybody's got to have a phone. Uh, I need the Internet. I can't function without that. And But do I, I guess I have to have water and gas. So we're going to keep going with all of these things, and you start seeing things add up. And sometimes this is a really big eye-opener for our students uh, in our in our our homes as we start to talk to our children about, look, do you realize how much money that we're putting out if we um, were when we dine out at restaurants all the time? 
And here we are spending this money eating at restaurants when that money could go someplace else. So this particular website, it'll give you a, a monthly expense and it'll tell you basically what kind of job you're going to need to have in order to maintain the lifestyle that you've chosen through the Texas Reality Check. So it's just a fun little website that you can use uh, with your uh, with your students at home or with your uh your older, your younger adults that you may have who haven't, maybe they're in college, but they haven't ventured out on their own yet, give them this reality check. And, and it truly is a reality check when it's all said and done. So explore some of the other ones. They're pretty fun as well. So then if we look at the military readiness piece, of course, we've got our branches of the armed forces uh, that our students can uh, um, enter into, uh, they are going to need the ASVAB test as part of it. They need to visit with the, with the recruiter, and the recruiters do visit our high school campuses, um, and they can seek out the, the different aspects of the military that interest them. Um, there are different opportunities uh, involved, and they can you can certainly find lots of information online. Um, and then this is a link that will also uh, provide you with information. And then I'll turn it back over to Ms. Tanner, who's going to discuss uh, the Summer Earn and Learn uh, program. And you may have be familiar with that because that's currently happening now. So thank you, Ms. Tanner. Yes, Summer Earn and Learn is one of the programs through the Texas Work. Uh, Force Solutions um, branch where we allow students who uh, are receiving those pre ets to have a paid summer internship. It's a five week program where students are able to uh, work on a job site. Uh, they need to work um, like four hours a week um, at minimum, up to 20 hours uh, a week, uh, and actually get that real world experience at a, um, at a place of employment. Um, this is kind of like a good, again, like a little appetizer on how it is, what it's like to work. Uh, students can have a job coach or uh, someone there to kind of help um, ease them into independent working uh, at that time. So they may start off with them uh, initially during that four hours, uh, and then as the weeks go along, it may dwindle down to, you know, two hours, one hour, uh, uh, Ultimately, we would like them to be, you know, working on their own so they can see what it's like to be a true uh, employee for someone. But it's a, a nice, quick summer five-week program uh, to get them involved. If that's something that you are interested in uh, for your student, uh, you would just reach out to me uh, and get you the application, and um, we could start that that first Prius. But we would require for that application, um, you know, of course, the applications, uh, a state ID, social security card, um, and their latest uh, ARD paperwork. Uh, but again, great opportunity to just reach out and have that first work experience for students 14 uh, through 22 in school. Okay, and we're nearing the end of our presentation now, but we just want to make sure that you are aware of community services that are available um, for long-term supports and services. So we have, uh, in Texas, they're, they're called Long-Term Supports and Services Waiver Program. They used to be called the, the Medicaid Waivers, if you're familiar with that term. Uh, so those provide uh, long-term support in the areas of, of medical assistance with respite care, depending on the waiver, um, specialized therapies in some of the waivers. Some just offer your standard OT, PT, and speech. Um, there is an eligibility requirement of, uh, depending on the disability and the ages on these waivers. Uh, but the breakdown is uh, ACOG IDD Services manages the home and community-based waiver services and the Texas Home Living Services for Bear County. And then Health and Human Services, which is also known as HHSC, they uh, manage the MDCP class and DBMD waivers. So those are the numbers that you can call to be placed on the interest list. Texas has an extraordinarily long interest list. 
uh, wait list for these particular uh, long-term supports and services waivers. And so it's important to start early and get on these lists as early as you can. If you uh, need assistance, I'm gonna provide our contact information so that you can reach out to us if you need assistance with this. Or you can use these numbers and call yourself and all you're gonna say is that you would like to be placed on the uh, long-term supports and services interest list. And then they're gonna ask you some more questions. So uh, it's important to be patient it's important to answer your phone if you have to leave a message. Uh, oftentimes uh, with ACOG IDD services, they, you are going to have to leave a message, but they will call you back. But if you're uh, an individual who typically doesn't answer a phone number that you may not recognize, I would advise you to uh, put that number in your phone and label it something to make you answer, answer the phone because that would be an, import, an important phone call. Um, if you determine that your student is uh, going to be in need of long-term supports and services. Um, it does, through these uh, waiver programs, they offer uh, employment support as well, independent living support. So uh, definitely check those, check into those and see which ones you qualify, and we can certainly help you with that process. Uh, this is Ms. Tanner's contact information through, uh, she's our transition vocational rehabilitation counselor through Texas Workforce Solutions. Texas Workforce Solutions does fall under the umbrella of Texas Workforce Commission. So if, uh, just to, to clarify the two terms, they are connected to one another. And um, Miss um, Tanner's email is there along with her office phone number. Um, and you can s contact her should you have further questions about the potentially eligible status uh, or the full array of services that uh, Texas Workforce can offer to our students uh, starting at age 14. Here is my contact information. You can contact and, uh, for me and Ms. Franklin here at Judson ISD. We can help you with any uh, transition related questions you may have in regards to um, the long-term supports and services waiver. We can help get you in touch with other agencies or uh, just kind of give you a direction to go if you're not sure where you are and where you need to be headed. We can certainly help you get started with that. So you feel free to reach out to us if there's information that you may be seeking. And then finally, we want to say thank you. We appreciate your time tonight. We hope this information has been helpful and uh, please reach out to us if you have further questions and uh, continue to access our special education playlist. You'll find other related videos um, re uh, that, that you may find helpful. Social Security, SSI and SSDI, um, alternatives to guardianship, behavior interventions, and stay tuned, there'll be more topics added uh, before the end of the school year's out. So we thank you for your time and we have a good night.